What's going on everyone, Josh Rezepka here, and today I'm very excited to be bringing you five tips from my friend Anibal Rojas. Anibal is an incredible saxophone player. He tours with Blood, Sweat, and Tears. He plays with pop groups and rock groups, and uh, he's been doing it for many years, and he is one of the best out there. Just a little over a week and a half ago, uh, I was in Newark, New Jersey with Under the Street Lamp, the group I tour with, and we were playing at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, and we were lucky enough to have an e-ball with us in the section. And we've played together uh, many, many times over the years, but it's been it's been a couple of years since I've seen him because, uh, you know, there hasn't been that much touring going on for obvious reasons. So we were hanging out and catching up and talking shop in the green room, and uh, I thought for a minute, I'm like, hey, uh, would you mind if I grab my camera? and uh, asked you for, uh, you know, your top five tips for playing in a horn section. And Anibal was kind enough to give his five tips for playing in a horn section. And I gotta say, all of his tips, they are just gold. This is great information. Uh, and it's gonna help you individually and as a group to sound better. So without any more introduction, here is my friend Anibal Rojas. Hello, my name is Anibal Rojas and I am a saxophone player. As of recently, I've been playing with Blood, Sweat and Tears. Kelly Clarkson, and Veronica Swift. I'm here to talk to you about five tips regarding playing in a horn section. <laughs> Tip number one is uh, paying attention to articulation. Uh, what's most important is to actually play with people you know, because then you'll actually have a tendency to play you know, similar to, for example, your friends, perhaps because you listen to the same type of music or uh, you've just been playing long enough that you can almost predict how your friend's going to play. So, for example, one of my best buddies is, is a trumpet player, and I know exactly how he's going to play a phrase, how he's going to articulate a phrase, and so it's easy for me. But when I play with another trumpet player and I'm, I don't know him as a person, uh, I'm not sure how he's going to articulate what's written on the page. You really have to almost get to know the person that you're playing with, you know, and, and get them, you know, try to become friends quickly and really understand what his approach in music is. Uh, different lead players will articulate differently. Some of them are slightly sloppier. Some of them are very forceful. Um, and you have to pay attention to this regarding how you're going to approach the instrument. Uh, so you're able to sound like one, as opposed to two or three. So the second tip I would have to say is really pay attention to your intonation. So you really have to understand how your particular instrument is being, is how you tune, how you play, how you approach it. But then most importantly, when you're playing in a section, you have to understand how your lead player is going to tune. For example, uh, I hear a lot of uh, players who play high and they tend to play sharp. So how do you approach that? Because you're supposed to try to give them the support that they need so they feel good playing a high note and it al almost like you have to play the basement of the house that needs a basement, it needs a structure to hold on to. That's what you're doing. You're helping the trumpet player play better, play more confident, play better in tune, but you're trying to match that you know, not giving him trouble in terms of, of trying to, uh, you know, call him up on his tuning or something like that, but just being able to say, you know, we're playing as a team here. So this is my buddy, and whether you guys know each other or not, and protect the horn section, be one. <laughs> Tip number three, everything I'm talking about is, is, is about being a team player and taking ego out of it. So tip number three is being able to breathe together. You have to consider, you know, as much the attack of the note, how the players next to you are attacking the note, as much as it is where you're going to end. If you're in the middle of a phrase, you know, figuring out where you're all going to breathe so it sounds consistent and understanding, you know, maybe the baritone sax player can't hold the note for as long and you have to protect him just like you're going to protect the lead trumpet player and be able to understand certain people need to breathe and whether you have to breathe separately you know in order if it's a very long phrase that needs to be uh, protected as musically and, and sound musical 
but as well as doing short passages as a horn section and breathing as one, as one person, four guys, three guys, you know, six guys, you know, seven guys and two women and be able to play together and you, sounding as one, as if you're a synthesizer and you have different sounds and each finger is a different sound. And so everything sounds together, joined together, that you're just friends, you're, you're playing music, you're doing what you love, come on. <laughs> Tip number four, which is be a team member. Imagine the drummer. The drummer has to worry about making the hi-hat feel good, making the snare drum sound good, making the bass drum, you know, match, where he's going to put his fills and everything. And we are pretty much like a drum set, except that imagine having five drummers play one drum set. One guy's playing the hi-hat. One guy is playing only the snare. One guy is only playing the bass drum. A lot of drummers would probably have a hard time with that because they've never had to play specifically with another drummer and how they feel time and how they feel the phrase and how they're going to feel time with a particular bass player, a particular rhythm section. It's, it's something that needs to be thought about. We as a horn section have to dedicate that. <laughs> And the final tip is tip number five, and it is one of my favorites, and it's something that's very personal, specific to the way you're going to play with certain other people. Now, it's hard to do with somebody you, you don't know very well, but when you're playing with a section, for example, when I play with uh, the, uh, the horn section in Blood, Sweat, and Tears, they're all my friends. I know exactly how they tune, how they approach, how they're going to phrase something, so... Tip number five is about swag, about making the music sound like music and not just a bunch of notes on a piece of paper and really giving it that, that dance feel, or putting a feeling into it. So how are you going to approach the note? Are you approaching the, the, the tone from above? Are you approaching it from below? Are you giving it a little bend? How are you ending the note? You know, when you play with a particular section, you learn these things. And as much as I, I keep repeating throughout this video, being a team player, leaving your ego aside and being one. And when you are one, you're able to add that swag. You're able to bring that, you know, stylistic presence as a particular horn section. So when you hear guys like, you know, in Tower of Power or Blood, Sweat and Tears or Earth, Wind and Fire, they bring not just the, the each separate player as an, a pro, an identity, but the identity of the horn section, you know, which is amazing to do when you are with people that you love and people that you enjoy playing with. So bring swag to the music. All right, there you have it. An Ebal's five tips for playing in a horn section. Articulation, intonation, breathing, teamwork and swag and I gotta say going into this I knew he was going to give incredible answers because playing with him in a section is so easy I can just tell when I'm on the bandstand playing with him that he is really listening he is paying attention he is paying attention to the articulations the note lengths the breathing the phrasing that swag that he was talking about uh, he just encapsulates all of that with every single performance and that is one of the reasons he is such an in-demand player and he gets to tour and play with these incredible bands so a very big thanks to my friend Anibal for sharing these tips uh, with me and with all of you uh, I know we're all going to benefit from it and if you want to check out more of what Anibal's got uh, go check out his YouTube channel I'm going to link it below and while you're at it, why don't you hit that like and subscribe button and, uh, you know, leave a comment down below. Let me know which tip resonated best with you, which one you found to be most helpful. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.